Hi. So all of this water stuff has come up recently because Trump did a whole meeting in California with a bunch of farmers about it. Um, and it really struck a nerve with me because I've grown up around farmers. I spent 10 years in rural um, Oregon growing up around dairy farmers and potato farmers and all different kinds of farmers. And um, then I spent 10 years in Redding, California, which is one of the most northern cities um, in California, which is also surrounded by farmers and have um, seen firsthand the water crisis that is going on in our country. I believe it's happening everywhere. I only personally know from experience Oregon and California. Um, and uh, it's been a problem since I can remember. I remember people talking about water rights and not being given water for their farms way back when. So this has really been a problem for a very long time. I'm not sure how long before I was born it was a problem, but it's something that just keeps going on. They're just, they just take the water away. So I'm just gonna kind of go into the problems that we're having today, and then I'll kind of go into some of the solutions that have been implemented slash are talked about. Uh, one, the government has slowly been taking water away from the farmers throughout the whole U.S. I just covered that. Um, they'll call droughts. The second thing they'll do is they'll call droughts uh, like they did in, in California, you know, what, almost 10 years ago now? And they never call off the drought. It's always, you know, oh, we still do have too much water or we don't have enough water and um, won't give it back to the farmers. They permanently take water away from farmers whenever there's a drought. Even when that's flooding outside, we were still in a drought. Remember when all the water was rushing down and we were concerned that our, our dam would break, but we couldn't release enough of the water, too much of the water because the dam down the street at the next city, was they were concerned that one would break and the, the water was coming up over the, um, uh, the banks and flooding houses along the rivers, the Sacramento River that goes through Redding. Remember all that? We were still in a drought. None of that water went to the farmers. So another crazy thing they do. Another thing is California is pumping millions of gallons of water into the Pacific to help the fish. Not sure exactly what the thinking is behind that. Can't think of any logical reason why we would take fresh water, pump it into the ocean and ruin it all rather than let farmers use it to grow food for us. So, um, so yes. Our farmers have slowly been getting poorer and poorer and poorer over the last few decades. It's really, really sad because they can't farm all of their land because they don't have enough water and the water gets more and more expensive. Um, uh, farm Farms help the economy. They help the environment. When you pump water onto the ground and you grow things, growing things take CO2 out of the air. So there's one good thing. And then also they, they, uh, they release moisture into the air, which causes more rain, which if you know about the water cycle, which we all learned way back, way, way back, or you were supposed to, if you didn't look it up, um, it helps the water cycle. It helps um, our diets by having fresh food that we're not shipping in from other countries. We can grow it right here and not have to rely on other countries. What if we all go to war again? And we're, we're just not letting our farmers grow any food? That just seems like a bad idea. Um, so a lot of people are having to, you know, the water has also been, listening to the farmers talk about it, has been so unpredictable. It's really hard, you know, if you, if you, they tell you one thing and then you don't know what you're going to get till you get there. So they'll be like, okay, let's not seed our entire land and then only get half the water we need to water all of it because then the seed for half of your land all the money you put into that is wasted. It's just gone. So the people would just be, would leave ground to go fallow while they um, just do what they know they can actually grow. So not all the land is being used. So there's just dry land up and down. When you drive up and down the 99, you can just see dry farms and signs everywhere saying farmers need water. So um, that's a problem also. California has some of the, like, is filled with orchards. We grow a lot of the avocados here. Those grow on trees. We grow a lot of citrus here. Oranges, lemons, those kind of things. They grow on trees. Nuts, we grow a ton of nuts. So almonds, walnuts, all those things. We grow that here. Those are trees. You can't let trees just not have water for a year and then water them the next year. They'll die. And then if they die, you're years and years behind what you, you know, you can't just fix that. You know, that's just, 
just killed all those trees because you wouldn't give the farmers water. It's crazy and it's a very, very serious problem. Okay. Um, another thing that is that farmers would pay for water and then they would never get it. They would just send the water that they wanted to the farmers and then let them deal with it. So that's a bummer. Um, another horrible thing that the government was doing was death taxes. So it's not called that. It's called um, an inheritance tax. Um, but, you know, farms are generational. People have been farming the same land for over 150 years many, many times. It's kind of how it works. And what they do is when you die and you give it to your children, an appraiser comes in and appraises it for probably a whole lot more than you can even sell it for. And then they make you pay that much in taxes. So it's like as if you bought the farm rather than just you know, inherited it from your, your dying grand, your dying parents, which by the time they're dying, you've probably been running the farm for a very long time anyway. So it feels like basically your farm and then all of a sudden you have to buy it all over again. And the people wouldn't have that money because farms have been getting poorer and poorer from all of these horrible rules that they have in place. Um, so they don't have the money. So then they end up losing the farm that has been in their family for many, many years. It was just a horrible thing. Um, my, my sister's in-laws had this happen to them. They lost a 200 acre farm because they couldn't pay the taxes, something that had been in their family for generations that they had, that the family had brought out of wilderness and tamed and built buildings on and the schools on and all lost. And it's been a worry in many, many farming families of, I want to leave this to my family and I don't have the money for my children to inherit this. And it just, it's a horrible, sad thing. Another thing they were doing was called the Clean Water Act. They went around and if they found, a, as Donald Trump puts it, if they found a puddle on your land, they'd be like, oh, you can't use any of this because it has fresh water on it. And they were effectively taking people's property away from them and not allowing them to use it or do anything on it because they were protecting the water. Fresh, the Clean Water Act. The, Trump says the only good thing about that act was the name. Another thing that hurt the farmers were the trade deals. So you had NAFTA, which was one of the worst trade deals ever made in history. And then you also had China, who was a bad actor on there, on the, the plane. And just the way that all went down, we weren't, you know, we're selling very little of our product out and we're buying so much in. And it just really killed the profits that our, um, our farmers could make. Also, I've heard, found out that on dairy products going into Canada, they were they had a 250% tariffs on dairy products going into Canada. That is crazy high. Anyway, all of that was hurting the numbers. So then the government was like, oh, well, we'll subsidize your, your, your farms so that you don't go under. Um, and I heard that was, that's crazy and super hard. So they wanted everybody to grow corn for some reason, probably to turn it into high fructose corn syrup to poison all of us with, if you're a conspiracy theorist like me. Um, so you have to follow all these specific rules. Um, again, my, my sister's mother-in-law's family signed up for a subsidy to keep their farm, grew a bunch of corn, spent all year doing it. Then when they went to harvest the corn, they didn't fill out the proper paperwork in order to harvest it a day late due to weather. Although town is six hours away and it would have taken all day to have filled out that paperwork because they didn't do it properly. They had them burn the entire crop, which caused weeks of heartaches and many, many tears because it was horrible, horrible, horrible things happening. And it's like, everyone talks about, you know, selling out, leaving after generations of farming because it's just too hard, too, too many things going wrong. One of the thing guys at this meeting said that him in, in 2000, you know, 15, they were talking about selling. They didn't know if they could make it any farther, but they decided to wait through the election and they were going to sell if Hillary won and then Trump won. And now whenever they talk about, oh, maybe we could sell, their father throws a huge fit and says, no, 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 Trump's going to fix it. <laughs> um, all right, let's go into what Trump has done to fix these problems. One, he fixed the federal problems that were causing all the water to be pumped into the ocean rather than given to farmers. And he signed an executive order ordering California to give farmers more water. Um, he says the governor needs to sign on for some a few things, and if he doesn't, he's going to be in big trouble. Trump's going to pressure him into it, so that's really good. All these farmers seem very hopeful and very excited for the future. He's investing in water infrastructure, including a new canal in California, which is amazing. No new water infrastructure or water storage or anything has been done for, like, 
a hundred years. It's crazy. I think, it, you know, yeah. Um, he removed the death tax. So now you can give, you can give your inheritance of your farm and your land and your thing, your equipment to your children with no taxes at all, which Trump is always saying, if you love your kids, that's great. And if you don't love your kids, don't leave it to them. And then this won't really affect you. <laughs> he removed the clean water act. So now people have access to all of their land again. He got out of NAFTA and he created, he signed the UC, USMCA trade deal. That is a trade deal with Mexico and Canada, which brings in a ton of, um, of purchasing from our farmers in that act. And then he also signed the first step of the China deal, which they're going to be buying $50 billion worth of, worth of, um, goods from us, not good goods, um, grown goods, like produce goods. Um, so that should be really, really great. We've never sold that many before. So these farmers who've been going under are now going to have to start, um, they're going to have to start making more than they've ever made. They can actually expand now rather than shrinking and tightening their belts and trying to make it through. So, uh, the things I have to say about this is I think Trump needs to do this everywhere. I think Oregon needs help. Oregon, the, the rural parts of Oregon are talking about seceding and trying to join Idaho so that they can get some help, get some water, be able to, they, they just want to live. They, they're, they're tired of Portland making arbitrary rules and forcing them into starvation, basically. So um, Oregon needs help. All of these different places need help. They need access to water. They need to be given the rights that they need in order to actually grow our food and grow and um, be successful. Um, and then the Democrats position on this is, um, Bernie's the leader right now. Um, and he's talking about the green new deal. They're all talking about climate change and that's the basic thing that they're all about. Um, the green new deal, I, I you're, you're going to think I'm joking. I don't even know how to go into this, but they're like, they're concerned about cows because they fart too much, release too much CO2. So I think they want to get rid of cows in general. I'm not sure if they're just going to kill all the cows or what exactly they're doing, but they don't want people to even be eating cow meat anymore. They basically want everybody to go vegetarian in this bill. And then they also are getting rid of all airplane travel in this bill and everything is supposed to go clean energy, all solar or wind or whatever, which whenever Trump talks about that, he's always like, wind doesn't really work because it kills all the birds and the bald eagles and the ones that are, you know, super protected. And you have to get the, the windmills from China and they do a lot of CO2 to build them and then they go into air repair. That's just a terrible way to get power. Um, so the Green New Deal is a giant nightmare, but that's what's being talked about on the Democrat side. So anyway, I think Trump's very important for this. Four more years.